This is the time period of my Haftorah. It tells about the birth of Samson, the great warrior who would eventually help the Israelites overthrow the Philistines and take back control of their land. In my Haftorah, God sends a messenger to tell Samson's mother that she was going to have a son that would be special and would help the Jews defeat the Philistines. The messenger tells Samson's mother not to drink wine or eat anything unkosher and to raise her son to take the Nazarite vows. The messenger comes back a second time. Samson's parents invite the messenger to stay with them and have a meal. When the messenger flies into the fire and disappears, Samson's parents realize they've been in the presence of an angel. Later, Samson is born and his parents raise him as a Nazarite. It is interesting to point out that Samson's family is not rich or outstanding in any way. However, God chooses them to bring Samson into the world because they are good, decent people. The lesson here is that goodness comes from within and not from outward appearances. In other words, to quote a popular expression, you can't judge a book by its cover. This teaches us to be equally open-minded when judging people in our own lives today. My Hof Torah and Torah portions are similar in that they both talk about taking vows. In the Torah, Nazarite vows are described. In my Hof Torah, Samson's mother undertakes Nazarite vows in order to bring up her son, Samson, to be a Nazarite. The link between the two is the theme of Nazarite discipline, a way of religious life under certain vows. Part of becoming a bar mitzvah means being able to see things in more depth. Until now, I thought of Samson as a superhero whose strength came from his hair. I now realize that his strength never really came from his hair, but from his Nazarite vows which brought him closer to God. His long hair was only a symbol of his Nazarite vows. When Delilah, his Philistine girlfriend, cut his hair, it symbolized breaking his vows with God. Departing from his commitment is what really caused Samson to lose his strength. When I look at the story from this perspective, I see that there is much more to learn. Although we no longer take Nazarite vows in times of trouble, we still make strong religious obligations to feel closer to God, and we still turn to God in times of need. Becoming a bar mitzvah is just one of many important commitments I will make that would give me strength and bring me closer to God. To me, becoming a bar mitzvah isn't just about parties and presents. It's about re accepting a big responsibility, the responsibility to be a good Jewish adult. At my age, responsibility is thought of as a bad thing or as hard work, but I am ready and willing to accept it. It's a lot more than just putting on talit and tefillin and being counted in the minion. It's about carrying on the traditions that are a major part of Judaism. Another part of being coming a bar mitzvah is giving something back to the community, or tzedakah. My family has been in this community for a very long time, so this is especially important to me. One of my great-great-grandparents, David Goldman, was a founding member of Congregation B'nai Israel. My great-grandfather, Joseph Silverberg, whom I am named after, was a founding member of Temple Bethel. Through the years, my family has been continually involved in the leadership of the synagogue. Now it's my turn to continue the tradition. I'd like to start by contributing a portion of my bar mitzvah money to our new synagogue Come Build It campaign. I'm also donating a Havdalah set to be used weekly. I would like to acknowledge and thank the many people who have helped me reach this milestone. First, I would like to thank Cantor Gewurz for working with me this past year to prepare me for today. I would also like to thank Rabbi Lusky for his guidance and leadership. The teachers I've had at the Pinellas County Jewish Day School and the Pauline Rivkin Talmud Torah have also played a major role in my Jewish education. I would like to thank my cousin, Larry Appel, for giving me some insights on my Haftorah. I would like to thank everyone here for coming and sharing this simcha with me. I would especially like to thank my family for their love and encouraging support. My mom has worked very hard. Between tour portions and table decorations, she's kept very busy. I admire her for all the time and dedication she put into this special day. Dad also has been very supportive. He's helped all of us keep a smile on our faces with his great sense of humor. 
Most of all, I would like to thank both of you for reading Torah. It really made this special event even more meaningful. Thanks, too, for gladly listening to my Torah and Haftorah over and over again. None of this would be possible without you. Finally, I would like to thank my sister, Evie, for being such a good sport about the whole thing. She's not used to me getting so much attention. I would also like to mention the important role my extended family has played in my upbringing. First, I'd like to acknowledge my wonderful grandparents, Grandma Jane and Grandpa Don Silverberg, and Nana Jimmy Gross, who live here in St. Petersburg and play a very important role in my life. My grandfather, George Gross, isn't here today, although he was trying very hard to reach this milestone. I'm sure he is watching, and in his memory, I'm giving a contribution to Menorah Manor. My aunts, uncles, and cousins are also wonderful role models and friends. Then there's my extended family. Every year when we have our annual cousins party, I realize how fortunate I am to have so much family here in the Tampa Bay area. I feel very lucky to have such a large, close-knit family from here and around the country who gives me love and support today and always. Shabbat Shalom.